Greetings my children and welcome to this MotionArray.com tutorial. Today I will be your guide as we show you how to say no to the primitive restrictions of gravity. And you might think that a technique like this would require after effects, but no, all of this will be done in Premiere Pro. So join me and let's get into it. And that's enough yoga music, let's get on with this tutorial. This effect is super simple to pull off, and believe it or not, the trick actually isn't in the editing so much as it is in the filming and the preparation. The way we're actually going to pull this off is by green screening. And here's a little trick. If you green screen in the actual physical location where you want to place your subject, it's going to look a lot more realistic. If I take the same key that I made at the beach and place it somewhere completely different, you're going to see some problems. And it'll take a lot more work if you want to salvage that key. If you actually want to key in your subject from two completely different locations, you're going to have to do a lot of work in preparation. Which direction is the sun facing, what color is the light, etc. So, in order to successfully green screen your subject, you're going to want to do a couple things. If you don't have access to a really professional perfect green screen, and yours is sort of wrinkly like mine is, that's going to be a problem. Trying to key out a green screen that's got all these shadows everywhere is going to be really difficult. So if you're in this boat, a really easy solution is actually just to move your green screen farther away from your subject. In this example, I had my green screen about 20 feet or so behind my actual subject point. And I had a shallow enough depth of field, about f2.2 or so, so that the background was actually blurry. Now the green screen all melds together into a little bit more of a uniform color. Those two points of having a shallow depth of field and having your green screen farther away from your subject will help you to get a more successful key in a pinch. Then just make sure that when your subject is sitting where they need to be, that the green screen completely envelops them all the way around. In this example, my feet are sticking down the bottom a little bit, but that's okay because they're not actually moving, at least not like my head and my hands are. If anything's gonna dip out of frame, this is the best place. And thirdly, having your green screen that far away from your subject will really help to make sure that your subject doesn't cast any shadows onto it. Now that we've got our green screen set up, let's lock down our camera and really make sure that it's in place, so that even if somebody were to touch it just a little bit, it's not going anywhere. Make sure that you've got something to elevate your subject above the ground. I have this stool here, which is all I'm going to need to get myself a bit off the ground, not too far. I want to make it look like I'm just floating a little bit and not like I'm soaring above the ground. We're not going to cover this with a green screen actually, and we'll come back to that just a little bit later. Now that that's set up, it's time to record. Hit the record button and go through your lines as many times as possible until you're absolutely sure that you've got the take that you want. Make sure not to touch the camera during this process and not to stop the recording. You want to make sure that there's absolutely no changes to your scene whatsoever and that there's no changes to your framing in specific. Once you're sure you've got your take and your camera's still rolling, strike the set completely and get a complete clean plate. Let it roll for at least as long as you've got your good take for. For me, that was about 20 to 30 seconds. If you've got a really elaborate setup and it's going to take a little while to actually strike your set, that's okay. Just be really careful to only touch the record button very gently and don't change your framing at all. This is not the optimal solution, but if it's a 15 minute takedown and you're not going to have enough recording space, it's the better of the two options. Now it's time to bring all of your footage into Premiere Pro where we can begin the magic. Place the take of your subject that you like on your timeline, and then bring it up a few layers. Then place your clean plate down underneath it. So right now, if you were to rapidly turn on and off your top layer, you should see that the landscape in general stays the same, with only your green screen, subject, and elevation tool being removed from the frame. Now make a mask around your subject. Go through your frame and see the full range of motion that your subject has, and make sure that at all times your mask isn't cutting off a limb. For us, at the bottom here, we have some problems with the feet jutting out of frame, but that's okay, because we're actually just going to cut that out with the mask. I made sure to try and not move my feet at all during this process to make it a lot easier. Mask as tightly as you can around each of the individual areas of your subject's legs, assuming that's the piece that's poking out. To dive in and get really fine detail, a good idea is to have your hands over two keys, H for the hand tool, which, when you bring this up, you can move your frame all around without actually messing anything up. And then P for the pen tool. Bring this back up to continue drawing your mask. 
Once you finish your mask outline, you're going to want to drop that feather down to about 3 or 4. And this is what you should be left with. You can already get the impression that you're starting to float a little bit. Now here comes the green screening part. Search for the effect Ultra Key, drop it on, and then take the eyedropper tool and then try to find the most average color of green on your backdrop. What I find can help too is by choosing something that's closer to your subject. If you need more help with your green screen key at this point, then we would suggest looking at this tutorial here, and I'll link to it in the description below. But once our green screen is keyed out, then we're left with this. And this is the point at which we're going to explain why we're actually green screening at all to begin with. I mean, why couldn't I just sit on the stool, mask that out, and use the clean plate to make up for where the ground is missing? Well, you could do that, but then your subject isn't actually floating, they're just locked off in space. Which, if that's the look that you're going for, you can totally do it that way. But what I wanted was for my subject to actually be floating, bobbing up and down a little bit, making it look like they're actually hovering in air. And when you think of that happening, your subject isn't perfectly still like they're sitting on something, it's like there's this force field that's sort of like maneuvering them around in midair. And if we were to try to do that without keying out our subject from a green screen, this is what it would look like. The entire frame would move with our subject because there's no way to actually separate them from the rest of the frame. I mean, you could try and mask your subject really tightly, but then you'd need to go into After Effects. And even then, that's a really tricky, tough, time-consuming job. There's also the Roto Brush tool, which you could potentially use, but I actually tried this just to see how it would work in comparison, and it didn't actually give me the results that I was looking for, at least not without a crazy amount of work by comparison. But now you can see that with our subject completely keyed out, we can actually manipulate our subject and make it look like they're actually floating. Pretty neat. From here, what I did was just keyframe a slow little bob, going up and down every so often, with a bezier in between each one, so that it's not a quick jitter from one direction to the other. Then I also played around with the rotation just a little bit, not really more than one degree ever at a time in one direction or the other. Subtlety is key here. Then to really sell this effect, you're gonna need a shadow. And the best part is, is that now that we've actually keyed out our subject from a green screen, we can just duplicate that layer, place it directly below, and then make it completely black. Then change its positioning so that it looks like it's a little bit more on the ground. Then you can uncheck the lock vertical and horizontal scaling, and you can shrink and grow your shadow layer to make it look like it's a little bit more 3D. For me, by shrinking the vertical scaling and by increasing the horizontal scaling, it really looks a lot more like my shadow is being cast from the sun off to the left of frame. And by adding a simple Gaussian blur, as well as dropping the opacity of your shadow, you can really make this look a lot more true to life. And whenever your subject moves, the shadow will move in an appropriate way. Because it's originally duplicated from that same layer. And to top it all off, I added a little bit of a heat wave effect here by adding a turbulent displace effect. Add an adjustment layer over top of your footage. Then place the turbulent displace effect on the adjustment layer. Then for me, I just set my turbulent displace effect to an amount of 22, a size of 60, a complexity of 2, and then I set the offset to keyframe over time, going from bottom to top. Now make a mask for your turbulent displace effect so that it's only underneath your subject. The result is that we get this sort of heat wave effect, which makes it look like there's this invisible force that's keeping me up. Then once we go through and add a little bit of a color grade, this is our final result. And guys, that's how you can make yourself float inside of Premiere Pro. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, as always, we have tons of other tutorials over at motionarray.com. Make sure to check it out. We've also got tons of templates and preset packs for Premiere Pro and After Effects if you needed to spice up your project. But guys, thanks so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.